Cathedral Mausoleum and see what we can see inside of there. So let's get on with it. Wow. Just beautiful. Nisa 1926, Pilar Nisa Canepa, infant, oh, and infant Josephine Bernadine, Stained glass in here. Oh, look at that. William Ferris, 1872 to 1944. Edith, 1877 to 1966. Wow. The Ferris family in here. I just love it because they had their own doors and they had them open for people to come visit. Place beautiful. I tell you. Ah, here is David White. 1916 to 1990. He was an actor, best known probably for his role on Bewitched as Larry Tate. And then there's him. And there's a bust of him in there. Jonathan White, 1955 to 1988. We have a child actress over here. Heather O'Rourke, she was in the Poltergeist movies, one, two, and three. And she was the one that got the iconic saying, they're here into everyone's psyche. And then in the Poltergeist sequels, that iconic saying, they're back. She was actually discovered in 1980 by director Steven Spielberg while eating lunch with her mother at the MGM studio commissary. And Spielberg was looking for a six-year-old girl to play the part of Carol Ann in Poltergeist and hired her after her interview and screen test very quickly. Among her many movie and TV accomplishments. 
The thing in her life she was proudest of was being elected student body president of her fifth grade class in 1985. And her one goal in life was to go to UCLA and major in filmmaking and to become a film director. That was one of her ultimate goals. Some of her television credits include Fantasy Island, Webster, Chips, Happy Days, and The New Leave it to Beaver. And when she was in school, she never turned down a classmate for an autograph. And she also was known to have an amazing memory, often showing up to movie and TV sets, having all of her lines memorized already. And on February 1st, 1988, at about, I think she was roughly 12 years, 12 years old, she died following two cardiac arrests, her cause of death later being ruled as congenital stenosis of the intestine, complicated by septic shock. That's sad. I remember her on Happy Days as well. I don't remember her in any of the other TV shows, like Chips and Webster, but I for sure remember her on Happy Days. Wow. The Lee family right here. Wow. Charles, 1910 to 1984, and Gloria, 1919 to There's a beautiful columbarium section out here. Let's go check it out. Kind of windy up here. Over there, they're building a new mausoleum section. Outdoor mausoleum section straight ahead. And over there, that brick, that's the chapel, one of the chapels over there. Quite the view from up here. Yeah, down there's all the building materials for the mausoleum. They're, they've been working on it since like 2021 or 2020. And it looks like they're coming along pretty good on it. Beautiful. Irene and Edmund. Irene was 1928 to July of 2011 and Edmund was September 28th, 1934 to the 21st of March 2017. Beautiful. This uh, is Brian O'Connor. was born in Ireland. He immigrated to Australia initially and later to America. He founded the O'Connor Moffat Dry Goods store in San Francisco, and he was a personal friend of Levi Strauss when he died in 1887. He left a huge fortune to his widow. They had no surviving children. But the thing that my friend tipped me off about in this uh, scenario here is, as we get closer, you'll probably be able to see it. He let me know that this was going on here that this, what you're about to see as you're seeing it, probably as I'm walking up, was 
a thing. So the door is open. And normally it's not. And my friend who walks cemeteries had told me about this. So this is gorgeous in here. And it left it was left open. This one right here is awesome, and I'm going to show you why. Ellen F. Christie, 1831 to 1904. Uh, she was a native of Ireland and died in Oakland, California. Um, there's very little on her. It looks like my buddy, Lisa, it looks like, uh, did a find a grave entry for her. It says, beloved mother of Joseph M. Christie, a native of Ireland, age 79 years. Friends and acquaintances are respectfully invited to attend the funeral Tuesday, January 12th, uh, 8.30 a.m., 12th Street, St. Francis Church, where a solemn mass will be celebrated for the repose of her soul, commencing at 9 a.m., interment at St. Mary's, Oakland. So, there we go. But this one right here... Um, it is awesome and I had to come back and and look at it because you're gonna see what we got going on in here Interesting. I found a little something on this family here. Christian Otto Miller, April 1st, 1865 to April 23rd, 1952, was a founder of the Pacific Lighting Corporation and later was on the board of directors of Pacific Gas and Electric Company, PG&E. And he was the son of banker Albert Miller and his wife Mary Ann Miller. On May 2nd, 1889, Miller married Enem N.E. Tucker. They had two children, Marion E. Miller and Leslie E. Miller. And then Enny died unexpectedly at the age of 30. On April 21st, 1898, Miller remarried to Janet Alpine Watt of Oakland, and they had two children, Robert Watt Miller and Albert Kendall Miller. Wow, interesting unexpected death by his wife and I also read he had built this for his first wife any so let's uh, go check this thing out here and here's some family on the outside Robert Watt Miller and Elizabeth Folger Miller Cooper Beautiful. The year. Ah, there's his wife, Annie. Put her on the door. They said he originally built it for her when she died unexpectedly. And 
and she is straight across. Her name is Enum, Enum H. Miller, beloved wife of C.O.G. Miller and daughter of Dr. J.C. and Minnie E. Tucker. Born in Virginia City, Nevada, died in Oakland, California, March 28, 1896, age 30. And right there is Christian Miller, San Francisco, California, October 1st, 1865, April 23rd, 1952. And there's a whole family here, the kids. And there's also uh, looks like cremations on the sides over here as well. Very interesting. There's that empty one right there. I'm not quite sure. I guess somebody might have been moved. But yeah. Starting to rain a tad bit. So we'll see. Maybe I'll wrap this video up. I got to come back here though. Probably on a day when the weather's better, the lighting is better. F. Senrum. Now these aren't, these three here aren't as elaborate and as these two are, as these four over here, which is odd. Uh, there's all look like castles and these kind of look like just regular, which they're still beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. Well, at one time, it was painted a beautiful blue in here. It, it's still there, there's the paint's chipping. That lighter hasn't been used in years. Heaton is the family name here. And it looks like they've had a break in because the door is chained with double, double paddle locks. So they've had problems here at this one. People still come and visit though, there's still flowers. That's the inside of it, can't really see much. It's dark and it's a cloudy day. It looks like there's a little bit of, could be some uh, graffiti or something wrote, something in the back wall there with chalk, it looks like. Rain's starting to come down a little bit harder. This is OB Smith and family. And look at the beautiful tile work on both sides of the door here. Gorgeous. Very unique. I like this. The rain's starting to come down a little harder, so I'm probably going to wrap this up pretty quick. This is the GoPro camera is waterproof, but I'm not. <laughs> so Oh, look at this one. Look at the tile work in here. We got Sarah Smith, 1845 to 1923. The Lord is my shepherd on the left top. O.B. Smith, 1836 to 1915. He giveth his beloved sleep. Got a Sarah Holmes on the bottom, 1872 to 1949. She loved the Lord, it says. Straight ahead is Mary F. Smith, 1874 to 1970. A Dorothy Grace Jones, 1908 to 1925, it says our blessing. Oliver S. Smith Jr. Well, Arl Oliver B. Smith Jr. 1882 to 1918, God is love. And then that bottom one is looks like it's empty. And then the one underneath Mary there is empty. But look at the tile on the back. I'm gonna try to get a better shot of this, but it is gorgeous. And we find ourselves to round out this video at the grave of I don't get no respect, Rodney Dangerfield. From what I heard, he, in the 1940s, worked at a resort in the Catskill Mountains and wrote jokes and was performing as a singing waiter as well. And then eventually he got out of the business to be a house painter, I guess to try to earn a more stable income. And then later on, he would later return to show business in the 1960s at the age of 40. And his stand-up act took off with various television appearances and comedy albums. The man who is famous for his signature phrase, I don't get no respect, 
opened up the self-named comedy club Dangerfields in New York City, New York, where he helped the careers of notable comics such as Jerry Seinfeld, Jim Carrey, Roseanne Barr, Jeff Foxworthy, Tim Allen, and Sam Kinison. His movie career was as varied as his comedy act, making his acting debut in 1971, The Projectionist. He would later appear in such movies as Caddyshack, Easy Money, Back to School, Moving, Ladybugs, Meet Wally Sparks, and Little Nicky. Now, my favorite movie, probably of his, ah, it's a close one, between Caddyshack and Easy Money. What is your favorite Rodney Dangerfield movie? He was a regular when Johnny Carson hosted The Tonight Show and would appear frequently on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno as well. One of his last appearances was in August of 2004, just days before his hospitalization for a heart valve replacement on the television show Jimmy Kimmel Live. And um, he lived from 1921 to 2004, died at the age of 82. A comedy legend, Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs>